How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. And yes, it's Friday and I'm here. I'm like Roman Reigns. I came to work today because, in fact, it is WrestleMania weekend. And we're going to preview the weekend. We're going to talk about the shows. We're going to talk about the matches. And uh, it is also Fun Friday. We're going to have fun on this show going into Mania Weekend. And uh, we're going to have so much fun that I'm going to open up them phone lines today. We are going to hear from you. I want to know what you have seen so far. Did you watch Bloodsport? Have you seen any of the other shows? What are you looking forward to? Do you have any wacky predictions that you think might happen this weekend? We're going to uh, jump into that a little bit later on. First off, we will go over some of the WrestleMania weekend news. I'm going to go over the lineups for all the shows as we kick it off here. And then uh, a lot of media, Triple H, talking about all sorts of different things, including how they believe that they have competition with themselves. And that is the only competition WWE has. Of course, there was a, uh, a big earthquake in the Northeast. And uh, also, uh, Cody Rhodes' bus caught on fire. Somebody on the board was like, is this show cursed? The show is not cursed, but uh, his bus did catch on fire. I'll tell you about that. And uh, also his new trademark, which uh, may or may not play into the finish of WrestleMania coming up on Sunday. You can also text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. F4W online at gmail.com, F4W online on threads, Instagram, and Cameo. And yes, if you want a WrestleMania weekend Cameo, I'm here. And I got nothing to do but watch shows this weekend. 25 bucks. Cameo.com slash F4W online. $25. Don't miss out. Add Brian Alvarez on X. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back of the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. It's Friday. It's Fun Friday, Mike. You ready? I'm ready. Yeah, it's Fun Friday today. We're going to have a fun time taking phone calls. <laughs> I'll give you that information coming up after the next break. Are there rules attached nah, to Nah, just calls? call and have some fun. Don't be an idiot. I'm going to get rid of you later. Remember, this is national radio. Yes, don't do anything stupid. Dummies. But, uh, hey, we've got a uh, lot to talk about. And uh, here's here's the, uh, here's the what you can hear not as a freeloader here on Observer Live. We, of course, have a member's a website, WrestlingObserver.com, and also video.f4wonline.com. And these are members-only podcasts, and we do... Like two dozen podcasts every week amongst the various hosts that you can only hear as a subscriber. And here on Mania Week, I uh, I did some adding, which is not my uh, not my forte. Uh, Unless but, it's dollar bills, baby. Yeah. Between now and uh, Monday, I'm doing. I am doing. I don't know about everybody else. Between now and Monday, I will be doing eight shows. Whoa. So uh, tonight, You're the speedball Mike Bailey of this thing. Uh, tonight it uh, will be uh, Vinny and I. Uh, we will be reviewing Ring of Honor. The ring, at least I'll be watching the Ring of Honor pay per view. He, uh, I've watched half of Bloodsport. He's going to watch Bloodsport, and I'm going to try and watch the Brian Danielson versus Blue Panther match before we do the show. But that is tonight, uh, which actually will be my second show because this is my first Saturday. We're going to do a show after NXT and also cover anything else. And also a Brian and Vinny show after WrestleMania. And also a Wrestling Observer Radio after WrestleMania. So uh, three shows for subscribers on Saturday. Sunday, I will be doing a, a Brian and Vinny show after WrestleMania. Talking WrestleMania and likely AW Collision. And then an Observer Radio with Dave... So two shows Sunday, and then Monday, you will be doing Observer Live, because I'm on an airplane, and I will be back for Observer Radio in the evening. So, uh, yeah, we will have a lot to talk about, and, uh, and that is that. So here are some of the lineups. We've got SmackDown tonight, which I will review at some point this weekend. We have the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, Jey Uso versus Solo Sokoa, Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate versus Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, 
Zelina Vega and Electra Lopez. And we've got the KO show with KO and Randy Orton. So they're going to be talking about the uh, the match coming up this weekend with Logan Paul, as we will get to when we run down the Mania card. Tonight is also the Ring of Honor show. But before that, here are the participants for the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. We've got Akir Tozawa, Andrade, Apollo Crews, Ashanti the Adonis, Bronson Reed, Brutus Creed, Cameron Grimes, Cedric Alexander, Chad Gable, Elton Prince, Ivar, J.D. McDonough, Julius Creed, Kit Wilson, Omos, Otis, Ricochet, Sanga, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Veer. And as I look at the list of names here, my official prediction for the winner of this year's Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal is... Bronson Reed. Ooh. Yes. Because if you'll recall, Bronson Reed defeated Sami Zayn two weeks ago. And I said, well, hey, you know, Sami Zayn goes and he beats Gunther, wins the Intercontinental title, and we got a we got a challenger. And then they announced actually Sami Zayn and Bronson Reed are having a rematch on Raw. I thought, well, I was wrong. I guess Sammy's just going to get his win back. But if you watched Raw, you know what didn't happen? Sammy didn't beat Bronson Reed. He has not beaten Bronson Reed. There was no reason that he could not have beaten Bronson Reed on Raw Monday unless Bronson Reed and Sammy Zayn is coming. And I think that Bronson Reed is going to uh, win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And then uh, it'll either be him and Sammy or maybe even... You know, do a TV match with him and Cody for that title. But I think that it's most likely him and Sammy. So that is my prediction. Yeah, that's who I was going to go with, too. Maybe it comes down to a bunch of guys from Raw who have been in the mix with each other a little bit over the past couple of weeks, uh, you know, with Reed and Gable and Ivar maybe in there and maybe Andrade towards the end, too. You could do something like that. But of the names you said, unless you want to do this where somebody is going to be standing next to the Andre trophy every week, you know, that's if you're going to gimmick it up, then you could have somebody else win it. But if you're going to use this as something serious and as to showcase somebody tonight, I think Bronson reads that guy. Remember way back when he got sent to Vince's big man wrestling camp. Remember that before he got released the first time Vince McMahon just looked at Bronson Reed and thought this guy is too short, too wide. He He needs to learn how to wrestle like a big man. That was completely unnecessary if you'd ever seen the guy before and what we've seen from him since. All you got to do is go out there and kill guys and look impressive, and he can do that. Ring of Honor tonight, Eddie Kingston, Mark Briscoe for the Ring of Honor title. Athena Hikaru Shida for the ROH women's title. Kyle Fletcher versus Lee Johnson. Queen Aminata versus Billy Starks for the TV title. Tournament finals. Got a new title coming. Matt Taven and Mike Bennett versus Sean Dean and Charlie uh, Carly Bravo. Dalton Castle without the boys. They have been fired. Versus Johnny TB in a fight without honor. Mina Shirakawa, Micah, and May Sarah versus Azumi, Tam Nakano, and Saya Kamatani. And Helico and Serpentico have been added to the show against Griff Garrison and Cole Carter. Two dimes. Two dimes. He actually is back. He vanished for like a year. And uh, Tony Neese and Josh Woods versus TBA. Then Saturday morning, it is Stand and Deliver. Trick Williams versus Carmelo Hayes. Ilya Dragunov versus Tony D for the NXT title. Lyra versus Roxanne Perez for the NXT women's title. Ron Breaker and Baron Corbin versus Axiom and Nathan Frazier for the tag titles. NXT North American title. Obafemi, Dijak, and Josh Briggs three-way. Thea Hale. Kalani Jordan, and Fallon Henley against J.C. Jane, Kiana James, and Izzy Dame. <laughs> Sean Booker Spears. going to have a field day with that one. And Joe Gacy and a mystery person will appear in the crowd. Ooh, I wonder if she'll be standing next to somebody wearing a hat. Will it be Julia? Julia ain't coming for a while, so I don't think it's going to be Julia. No, never mind. But who knows? It could be. 
I should also mention that uh, there has apparently been some discussion of of adding a stipulation to Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes. Oh come on! Now, now it's too late. Now you're that's that's me actually off with the this. entire point. Like, Ugh. if they do that in storyline, Ava is the most incompetent GM I've ever heard of in the history of wrestling, because you're telling me she just figured out. Hey, you know. Maybe instead of asking that ref for leniency, maybe I could attach a stipulation to this. We'll find out. Making President Tunney look good. Or it's just a match. There are some decisions that Shawn Michaels makes as the king of NXT down there that are absolutely bizarre. Some things are so great, make so much sense, are perfect. And there are other times where it's like... You know, I don't know what 4D chess you're playing, but it, it just never, it doesn't make any sense. Then we got night one of Mania. Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch for the women's title. The six-pack ladder match. Judgment Day, DIY, New Day Awesome Truth, New Catch Republic, A-Town Down Under. Ray and Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. Jay Uso versus Jimmy Uso. Jade Cargill, Bianca, Naomi versus Damage Control. Somebody on the uh, chat here... They said, uh, where is it? They go, I think that uh, Sammy's losing because the match is going on early. Actually, it's not. It's a semi-main event of night one. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, Gunther versus Sami Zayn and the Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody and Seth. Now, I will say this about Sammy and Gunther, okay? Sammy is going to be the Intercontinental Champion beating Gunther. However, mm-hmm. it is possible that Gunther beats him at WrestleMania and Sammy wins the title a week later in Montreal. They could do either way. But back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper BB, also WrestlingObserver.com. So yes, Raw is in Montreal a week after WrestleMania. So either Sammy is going in the conquering babyface with the title, or I suppose he could get screwed, and then uh, he gets his big victory in Montreal. But I do not picture him being a failure in Montreal again. That's literally the entire story. And uh, they are not going to do that to him. So. That, that would have been Vince McMahon circa he is 2004, gone. where he wins the title, he gets his moment at Mania, and then gets destroyed in his hometown and loses the title by the end of the show. Let me tell you why I like that idea. Because you can have Imperium jump in on this, which then leads to Chad Gable still needing to say that last piece of advice that Sammy takes, and then they go into Montreal. And you could do a pretty good piece of TV with throughout that entire show leading to the end with him winning that title with Otis and Tozawa fighting off Imperium, fighting off Vinci and, and Kaiser, and then having Sammy get the victory. I mean, for television purposes, depending on what you're going to do, I mean, that could actually be really good. And then we've got uh, night two. Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre opens a show. Philadelphia Street Fight. Lashley and the Street Profits against the Final Testament. L.A. Knight versus A.J. Styles. They had some wild brawl a couple of days ago on social media. Yesterday, I think. Today? United States today. U.S. Champion Logan Paul versus Orton and Owens. Io Sky versus Bailey for the women's title. And Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. Cody has, in fact, uh, he's got a new trademark. He said he really fire. likes the Renaissance oh. era as the oh, name boy. for this time period. Oh, and he boy. likes it so much that he filed a trademark for it. I'm sure this will not have anything to do with his title reign. It is merely he likes the idea that this is called the Renaissance era of WWE. So there you go. Uh, his tour bus caught on fire. Nobody was hurt. He says, before you hear it elsewhere, the tour bus caught fire last night. Everybody's safe and okay. The two items I grabbed before I got off will probably pop wrestling fans. Thank you again, Philly Fire Department. I wonder where those are. Yeah, really. I wonder what he, wonder what he got off that bus. What is the new Major Bendy's figures or something like that? I mean. Hmm. <laughs> we had a bunch of people all over the place this the weekend. The autographed weight belt he got from The Rock. AW Women's World Champion Tony Storm appeared at the Stardom Show, which, of course, Filthy Tom Lawler did his commentary debut for Stardom with Veda Scott. And she said she wouldn't be there today 
without stardom and was forever grateful to the company. She presented Mariah May with flowers, said she was proud of her, turned her attention to Mina Shirakawa. They got face to face and she told her, the forbidden door is always open. Please. If you guys can figure that out. If you need more clues, I'll give them to you later on. Well, GSA, hey, did you hear old TK Stack Money's uh, presser yesterday talking about his relationship with stardom? No. Vastly improved. Well, yeah, Tony did not like Rossi Ogawa. No. Charlie Dempsey was at Bloodsport. hinted as to why, by the way. Well, why? Well, he seemed to, he said, you know, started talking about, you know, when I do business with somebody with Bushy Road, you know, I like going right in the front door. And, and being able to talk with New Japan and having that open door. And I don't know. I, I took him in talking about that to kind of indicate that maybe Rossi was trying to use other channels to either get talent or give talent, maybe not go through the office. And we know Rossi had his problems with the new Bushi Road management that took over from him when he sold the company to them. So obviously there's more details there whether they come out on either side as things roll along well obviously we'll that's out. what uh, that's what he thinks about uh rossi and of course the rossi side denies all of that yeah so anyway and we'll see and look as they get that promotion going i'm sure we're going to hear more about what took place wwe wrestlers at blood sport cm punk Liv morgan sonia deville natty Shayna was on the show and zoe stark was in her corner Nick Khan was there talking to Josh Barnett, took a picture with Brett Lauderdale. It's incredible. And The Rock was two hours late for an appearance at his uh, at <laughs> it's, WWE World. It's traffic. He's a big traffic. star, you know. He probably had to take the uh, the blue he, line. Uh, yeah. He couldn't find a helicopter landing pad to, no. to sit on top of the building or whatever it is. Hey, listen, Come I don't on. want to sound like I'm burying the guy because I'm not. All right. But, you know, we're not going to do the full blood sport uh, recap here today. But the Charlie Dempsey Matt Mikowski match. So the thing with Bloodsport is, like, some of the matches were, uh, you know, worked MMA style. Then some of the matches were just like, you know, complete 100% pro wrestling grappling, suplex every now and then, whatever. Some were a mix. And the Matt Mikowski match with uh, Charlie Dempsey was... This is what I got out of it, okay? Matt Mikowski, I thought, was awesome in this match. Yeah. Former MMA fighter. He's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He's just like, this style is made for him. And he got in there with Charlie Dempsey, whose gimmick is that he is a catch wrestler, right? Yeah. And I watched the match... And what I got out of it is Charlie Dempsey has absolutely no earthly idea at all about legitimate grappling. He knows pro wrestling mat work. And, you know, that's fine, you know, whatever. But what I thought was, if your gimmick is that you are going to be a shooter, you should probably train somewhere. Because he would be in these positions with Matt Mikowski. And, like, lost. He had nothing. <laughs> Absolutely, positively nothing. And, you know, Matt Mikowski, if, when you're a black belt in jiu-jitsu, if you're in with anybody who has any training whatsoever, like, you can do some really, really cool stuff. And it was literally just Dempsey doing... And it's not even like Zack Sabre Jr. Zack Sabre Jr. is a... His gimmick is he's a catch wrestler. But, you know, he... Straight arm bars, triangles... Uh, you know, shoot style, not even shoot style, like legitimate counters, like all sorts of stuff. And I think that if that's going to be your gimmick, find a gym, get in there and train. Moxley, that's not even his gimmick, okay? But Moxley decided, you know, I want I want my gimmick to be that I'm a brawler, but also, you know, I can I can grapple. And he did that. He found a gym. He trains. Baron Corbin, the same thing. Moxie found a gym. He goes there every week. He trains. He got his blue belt. He's competed. I just saw a video of of uh, Baron Corbin. He doesn't even do that sort of thing, but he's out there competing, you know, doing jujitsu. So I think that uh, Dempsey should get in there and find a school and learn some stuff and add it to his repertoire. 
he just felt like to me he was kind of caught between worlds because the match he had with uh, Nakajima when he worked at All Japan in January, much better and actually would have fit on the show a little bit better. It just, Mikowski's good and GCW and JCW uses him. That's where I've seen him there and he's come along as a pro wrestler and I think, you know, I think yesterday he really, again, did a very, very good job. But to me, I didn't think it was all that bad, but it did feel like Dempsey was kind of caught between, like, different worlds. And it, it, was yeah, it wasn't not... bad. I actually thought it was good. Yeah. But it was clear watching it that one person knew what they were doing and the other did not. And the person that knew what they were doing was trying very hard to carry the other person through the match. Yeah. like And it's, and it's like... nothing against... It's nothing against Dempsey. It's a different style that he doesn't know. And all I'm saying is, learn it. That's it. D tell me his daddy didn't teach him anything, Brian? You telling me that William <laughs> Regal? Oh, no, he did not teach hey, well, him hey, jiu-jitsu hey, or cage you, wrestling or anything. You know, you know what was very, very interesting on that show was, you know, because you do like the shoot style stuff, the UWFI stuff, and and things like that, and, and the kickboxing elements that are brought in there, but. Speedball Mike Bailey and Nick Nemeth had a pro wrestling match, and it was in that realm, but I thought they pulled off what they were doing. I thought that was actually really good, what they did, because it was much more of a pro wrestling style match than you usually see in Bloodsport. Well, I'll do I'll do every I'll do the full thing later tonight with Vinny, but yeah, Nick Nemeth and Speedball was like a a, a mix of a MMA style grappler versus striker. But also with some pro wrestling. And it's a story, a little story attached. And and by the way, there's another one. Like Nick Nemeth, I mean, you could see this guy was like a great wrestler who had absolutely no idea what to do on his feet. I mean, great college wrestler. None. Yes, he was. <laughs> uh, you know, no. <laughs> Lindsay Snow and Lady Frost was really quick. Uh, Marina and Janai Kai, I mean, that was good. Kai, I, that, that was a, that was a fun little match. Charlie Dempsey and Mikowski. Mikowski was awesome. I mean, you could just see, like, watching this show, like, who trains and who doesn't. I mean, you could see that Nemeth was a wrestler. You could see that uh, Mike Bailey, you know, did a lot of, of uh, you know, karate, taekwondo, whatever. Marina, you could see just the second it started, she's an MMA fighter. <laughs> yeah. Mikowski, the moment he got on the mat, you're like, this guy is going to clean this guy's clock. And then there was, like, the, uh, the Nomura versus Abe match. Takuya Nomura and uh, Fuminori Abe. This was... Total, you know, young lion, you're not allowed to do anything but grapple. And then there was like a, a suplex there at the end or something. But, and, I mean, total total pro wrestling. Eric Hammer and Lou Nixon are two pro wrestlers. <laughs> Eric Hammer who, looks like the dude. Though. They did absolutely 100% a worked UFC fight. There was nothing resembling pro wrestling. It was like, of all the people, 100% worked UFC fight. And then uh, I'll talk about Minoru Suzuki and Royce Isaacs quickly after the break of Observer Live. This I promised fun Friday. Give yeah, us a call. 1-800-878-PLAY. Did you hear that number? 1-800-878-PLAY. 7529. 1-800-878-7529. 1-800-878-7529. You're calling Sports Byline. Okay. So be on your best behavior. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how many people are on the line because it's going through byline today because I'm lazy. I'm just going to say let's go to the phones and you're you're on the air. Don't do anything stupid. Say anything yeah. stupid. And uh, and then we'll go to the next call. So, and don't, you don't even have to ask us how we're doing. We've already yeah, told let's get you moving. how we're doing. And if the, if the line's busy, call again. Let's get through. What are you looking forward to? Do you have a wacky prediction? What have you seen and what did you enjoy? Yes. Make it quick. You got a minute yeah. when you're on the air. All right. Don't flush the mouse here, people. I would also like to say very quickly while we're waiting for the calls, that Minoru Suzuki Royce Isaacs match. You know what that was to me? What's that? That was Royce Isaacs hearing that he was going to get a blood sport match with Minoru Suzuki and getting super excited and thinking that he's going to fight an MMA fighter, a former King of Pancras champion. And he went in there with one thing on his mind. And the other guy was like, brother, I'm doing my shtick. I'm working. I don't bend that way. <laughs> I'm 55 years old or whatever. Not happening, brother. And uh, it wasn't like it was bad, but it was like Royce was trying so hard to do this match with this guy. 
and Suzuki is just like not happening. Yeah, it's 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 hard to do a match like that when Suzuki keeps rolling out of the ring to break the count, and then ultimately won with a gotch style pile driver. Yes, via knockout. <laughs> I got to watch the rest of the show after this show, and then I'll I'll talk about it with Vinny tonight. But uh, I Which, by the way, pile drivers enjoyed it immensely. Have been used to knock people out in MMA. Very rare, but it has happened. Yes. All right. We're going to go to the phones. Producer Daniel will tell me if no one's on the on the air. We'll have him debut on the show if need be. But uh, you're on the air. Who is this and where are you calling from? This is Ray from Austin, Texas. Yes, Ray. And uh, I was listening to Lance show a few days ago, and I have to agree with him about the tag team ladder match because... You don't want to see the same thing that happened last year when Triple H introduced the world title because nobody could beat Roman Reigns. So you have to split up the belts. And I think this way of two tag teams getting a pair in a match that you don't have to pin either of the Judgment Day is clearly what they're going to do. And if not, you know, I'll give you 50 bucks. Well, you know, I want to thank you very much for the call. But Lance's prediction, if you didn't hear the show... Was that uh, the the deal? By the way, Daniel, when I say thank you very much for the call, that means you can disconnect him. I I don't know if he's uh, that that's how I do it. But anyway, um, his his prediction is that uh, one one team's going to grab one set, another team's going to grab another set. And uh, the thing is, here's what's interesting: they have said you must pull down both sets of belts. Okay. But they have never made it clear that the tag titles could be split in this match. So I do believe that that is probably what's going to happen is, you know, maybe Judgment Day will get one set and, uh, you know, whoever else will get the second set, DIY, whoever. Yeah. I hate that. I would save that for the draft then break it up that way. But well, I would not even have a draft personally. Well, you know they will. All right, let's go to the phones. You're on the air. Oh, is this where you're calling from? Hey, this is uh, Brandon from Portsmouth, Virginia. Ma'am, my main Hello. man, Brandon, yes. What's up? Hey, so this might not really be a wacky prediction, but it is a wacky desire that I want for this Bloodline Rules match. Um, I just want all chaos happening through this match. I want, like, 50 people out there fighting each other. I want Rikishi out there giving sting faces to people. Oh, my God. <laughs> I want... I- I want I, I I want Mako Satamora coming after the Rock because she's the real final boss, and then Ava Rain comes after Mako for coming after her father. All of this chaos I want, and then in the end, Cody pins Roman and finishes the story. So that's what I want. Well, I want to thank you very much for the call. And uh, if you watch the Bloodline Rules match on Monday, I mean, what I expect is largely the same thing. I think they're going to go 20 minutes, and there's going to be nobody out there. And then I think that something's, you know, Cody's going to go for some move or whatever. And then the dudes are going to start running in. And I hope it's the exact same thing. And, you know, I, I, I do not think this is going to happen. Okay. But, you know, that, that, uh, that CM Punk interview where he was, he was, he was burying AEW and everything. And he did say, he did say one thing. And that is, you know, no matter what he thought about the company and everything, he said, Tony Khan's a nice guy. And I would not disagree with that. Nope. Whatever you want to say about AEW, Tony Khan is a very, very nice guy. Fact. And I don't think it's going to happen, but I believe that if Nick Khan called Tony Khan and he said, can we please use Dustin in this match, I believe that Tony Khan would say yes. I don't think it is going to happen, but I think if WWE wanted it to happen, it would happen. So we'll see. But I do I do expect I don't think Rikishi's gonna be there. But I hope there are a whole bunch of callbacks and surprises and, and all sorts of nuttiness and I don't want it to be a House of Torture match, but if you watch House of Torture matches, I mean Ugh. they're absolutely horrible, but you know what? Yes. Every now and then they have the one where the House of Torture does their shtick, but the baby face one ups them right and left and gets the win and the place goes nuts. It works every time. And I think it's okay to do that in this particular match. And you can have a lot of, of what Brandon was talking about when it comes to the family later, because remember 
Uh, I can't remember if it was Zilla Fatu or whoever it was that was talking about the fact that they got calls. They were going to do a possibly a tribal summit with the entire family. That was on, you know, a possible thing last year. You could still do that again. And if you're going to introduce a Tamatonga or somebody like that into the mix as Roman, you know, again, Roman's probably going to go away after Mania too, so you're going to have to probably, you know, tie up those ends as well too. So you could actually maybe wait on some of that stuff until afterward. 1-800-878-PLAY, 1-800-878-7529. Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. Drive time radio. Oh, sorry. What's going on? Hello. Hey, it's Don the Don Rossberger here calling you. Perfect for drive time radio. Yes, Don the Don. Yeah, it's me. Uh, you know, I was uh, watching that blood sport thing, and my favorite thing about that whole show was a little kid that was right there by the entrance where all the wrestlers came in. And, uh, you know, they'd all look at him. The best one was Minoru Suzuki just stopped dead in his tracks, looked down at the kid, just gave him that, Ugh, and the kid just did not flinch, had his hand out. And Minoru Suzuki reached down and just flipped him on the chin with his finger and, Walked into the ring. It's great. <laughs> well, thank you, Don the Don. I appreciate it. And uh, don't you, should, you know, Don the Don. Uh, you know, I, uh, is, isn't the Don fighting for the NXT title? Uh, the one Don is one that Don. Don. I got to be honest. Do you know how much bourbon and how many menthol cigarettes that I smoked for years to try to get a radio voice like that? Well, My God. Yeah, Don the Don. He should. Uh, he should be the co-host Fridays. All right, let's uh, go to the phones. You're on the air. Filthy mean, I'll make it back. Who is this? Hey, this is Dan from St. Charles, Missouri. Yes, Dan. Um, to follow up on what a caller just said a, a minute ago, I was listening to uh, Michael Cole. Uh, they had the Pat McAfee show earlier today, and uh, he, he mentioned... Um, oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, I, I completely lost it. I completely well. Hold on, completely we were talking. Lost my train of thought. Hold on, we were talking about uh, which call are we talking about? The one that was talking about. Um, I forgot what we were talking about as well. <laughs> what were, yeah, what, it was, was two it callers calling? ago. It was a, what was the caller two 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 calls ago, Mike? Mike. <laughs> what, talking about what, Portsmouth talking about the uh, tribal chief and talking oh yeah, about the, the Rikishi, chaos? Rikishi, chaos. House of Pain, House of Torture. <laughs> House yeah. of Pain case. Uh, not, Dustin, not, 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 Dustin, not Rikishi, Dustin, but Dustin Rhodes. But yes. The possibility of Dustin Rhodes showing up. Yes. Michael Cole actually mentioned Dustin Rhodes by name. Did he? On the Pat McAfee show. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. yeah. I, I want to thank you very much for the call. I'm telling you, I don't rule it out. I don't want people reporting it. I just, Ryan, I can't rule it out. Rock has talked about that man's mama. He has talked about, he know, he talked about his sister, talked about his Oh, his brother. mother will be there as well. Oh, my God. I'll it's bet you anything. I'd, I'd bet you 100 bucks. His mother's going to get a hold of that belt, and she is going to whip the bejesus out of the rock. Mm. Guaranteed. Absolutely is Teal, guaranteed. Is Teal Margaret going to be there? Absolutely guaranteed. I hope everybody's there. It's going to be amazing. It wonder, is. I wonder, wonder if Brandy's going to show up. Ooh. Ava and Brandy. I don't know if Brandy's. I don't know if Ava's going to be there as a heel though. Hey, you know you want to know scoop everybody. It's kind of weird. What's that? So there's there's so many people going to Mania, and like there have been a bunch of shows lately where uh, you know in the in the back you know TV or whatever they have the sign up. Absolutely no comps. You cannot get your family there, and it's to the point where there are there are people who have been employed for in WWE for years. That are going to be working the NXT show and then have to fly home. They yeah. will not be going to WrestleMania. So it is packed in the back. It is packed in the building. And uh, and they got to make some calls. Be interesting to see what they announce. I think what both nights are going to technically be under 70,000, but I can imagine. Oh, they'll, they'll say 91. Well, that's what they'll actually say. probably say more than the actual number for Wembley. I'm, I'm I guarantee not sure. You. What, somebody will have to look up what the, the biggest Eagles game has done technically, and then, yeah, add on 10,000 to that, and you're going to have a total of uh, pushing 200,000 by the time it's said and done. <laughs> Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's going on? What's up, guys? My name's Carson. I'm calling from Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, I wanted to talk about AEW Dynasty. Uh, I think you have to 100% put the title on Swerve uh, or else he's going to fall into that same category as Danielson is. You know, a guy who's destined to never win gold. 
But uh, I think this is a prime opportunity for them to make the first black world champion in, I mean, right into Wembley because then it's Osprey show after that. Well, I want to thank you very much for the call. I think that at some point, for sure, Swerve needs to be champion. But when I do look at it, as I've talked about before, if it's my company, I do not make Swerve my babyface world champion and put him in a position to be booed against Will Ospreay for weeks leading up to and in Wembley for that title. So I... But you know what? He can lose it to a Takeshita or somebody like that. It's too many title changes. That. Wembley's only a few months away, dude. Yeah, but I know. But look, if you do it right and you tell the story right, Brian, you can absolutely do it because you haven't done it. You haven't bastardized it, so you I can I know, but, but having your first ever... Can you imagine having the first ever black AW champion and beating him a month later? I mean, you can't. You just cannot do that. He needs a good long run and, you know... Hey, listen... You He's want him to be one. Will Ospreay? Fine. I'm fine with that. Down the road. Other than Will Ospreay, he's the number one baby face they have, and they got to continue to keep gassing him up that way. So, you know, I agree that way. He should become the champion, you know, sooner rather than later. But, again, you can, if, again depending on how, how hot he is and how popular he is, you could have a Samoa Joe or somebody do something dastardly to him as long as he gets revenge on that Wembley show. I like old Lenny here. I would have called if I had the number. Oh, well, you I've stop. only gave the number 15 times in the last 10 minutes here, and brother. We've been using that number for 15 years up until you got your studio. All right. To the phones. You're on the air. What's going on? We are out of callers. Oh, my God. Oh. See, Lenny? Yeah, you messed up. Well, and yeah, now we got a minute timing, left. Though. Listen to, yeah. listen to Daniels. Uh, Daniel, what are you looking forward to this weekend? Uh, I would say um, probably hammered. Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre. Seth Rollins, what a sexy voice that uh, Daniel has. Sorry, I called you out earlier. Anyway, we got to go to a break. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I told you all it'd be a fun Friday, and it was. We should do this more often, except not on what? Friday. I'm I busy. Was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, I go have a different kind of fun Friday. But uh, the kids are gone. Daughters and wife. It's girls' weekend. Do you realize that when kids are four, they're just like, God. I I picked up Hanalei from, from preschool yesterday, and I took her. First off, I took her to the pet store so she could buy a, a toy for our pet. Then I took her to Pinkabella Cupcakes. What pet? We have a cat. Oh. And I took her to Pinkabella, and I'm sitting there eating a Pinkabella Cupcake with her. I bought her a cupcake. And she is busy telling me how excited she is for Girls Weekend and no daddy. I was like, you'll miss me tonight <laughs> when no one's reading you your bug book before bed. But anyway, it is Girls Weekend, and so I'll be at home watching nothing but wrestling. Eight podcasts over the next several days here, all going up for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com and Video.F4WOnline.com. And uh, you can check it out. And uh, we'll be covering all sorts of different things. And uh, also, you know, it's WrestleMania weekend. You want a cameo, 25 bucks. Cameo.com slash F4W online. They're starting to flood in now. I'll be doing my best to do those. I may be doing them while watching a show. I mean, we got to fit them in somehow. Yeah. But uh, it's going to be a fun time. So I will see you all later tonight if you're a subscriber. Uh, Brian and Vinny show, WrestlingObserver.com, video.F4WOnline.com. Uh, three shows tomorrow, two shows Sunday, and a show Monday night. And so uh, well, let's enjoy it. And uh, that's it, everybody. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. We shall talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.